one of the bigger critiques of this hero. So Tiamia is going to be able to perform on the Omni. We can pull out with the, the last pick from them. We are going to be heading into game two, of course, final game here of our third series of the night. Getting the once again the ever so staple BZM invoke up the whisper. Mars as well. Intrigued to see also how GPK is going to be able to perform on the on the Void Spirit. It's something we've seen in the past to be able to help slightly counter the Invoker, just a natural way to be able to get on top of him. And this hero, I, I wonder, I saw still a lot of Ooh, people in Void Spirit. You see? Oh, that Nog Illusion just saw the smoke. And that's why everyone's all <laughs> chatting, like, oh, well, that's copying someone. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Plus plus. <laughs> Thirty seconds to battle. Oh, big brain, well done. <laughs> yeah, so this get, smoke should wait. not surprise anyone. I guess what is he saying? Copying because of the late smoke from last game from Bedroom. Is <laughs> that why Tokyo is saying it? I guess so, I don't know, but it'll be funny if it actually works this time for OG and it didn't work for <laughs> That boom. Alright, this game is going to be a, a bit different. Two for two? Not all four runes are going to bet boom this game. That's also see, probably that's why, why the won. laning stage yeah. didn't go well either. You know, you lost four bounty runes. That's got to be devastating for laning stage. You can say that having a... Uh... Extra chunk of gold in the lane is going to be very impactful. I mean, we know how important like getting a first blood is on a, on a mid laner or something like that, even a core in particular, and then get full bounties for for all the team to be able to work with too. So we're going to have a, an even slate to start this game. We're going to see some of the aggressions and spokes harvesting coming out in the lanes. Looking probably more even, would we say, than the previous game? Like, it is a really lanes in particular. You feel like it is going to be. A little bit more chaotic or, or vulnerable? Uh, maybe the Omni lane. I think that's the only okay. one. I think bot lane should be just free farm for both heroes. Unless Toronto Tokyo hits like some crazy arrow. And he might be able to with the net as well. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on for that. But the real question for me is going to be, of course, how well is this last pick Omni going to perform? You mentioned it yourself. If you don't have a good laning stage, this hero is kind of known to just have issues with getting his farm up. But right now, a skilled level one heal. Seems to be doing just fine, but so is Alchemist. We'll see when the levels come online. Oh, they're potentially going, but nah. not a level two on the tiny, so no avalanche quite yet. I have to see how those sun strikes come into play, of course, for BZM. Like you said, it's a much easier game, especially with having Whisper on a hero that can stun. You got two stuns up top. In fact, all side lanes have two stuns, so. We're going to see Tomato starting to cook up the concoction. Seb's got the Earth back to be able to follow. There's the Sun Strike. And there is our first blood. Quite good. And we haven't seen a lot of line, but I feel like this line hero can make Omni very sad because he has a lot of spells that he wants to cast. And if he's going to have no man on the laning stage, that could be very problematic for him. Gonna have to keep the stick charges up, maybe get some lotuses. I think lotus will be pretty critical in that lane, so we'll keep an eye on that for the next 30 seconds. And mid lane, wow. GPK, he must know this matchup pretty well as he is cruising through it in the CS department versus Invoker already. Is this normal for a lot of at least first couple of levels on Invokers until you get especially some stats as well against Amelia here. How much uh, mid invoker do you think I've played with especially <laughs> egg sort? <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> no, I, don't, I have no <laughs> idea. There's some things that I just, I'm just not sure about. But I, Honor? Void Spirits have been something that Ooh, are kind of strange. Okay. okay. It's gone. And that's the strength right there of like the Omni. You see how much damage that does? It's a lot. Even against a big strength hero that's nice and tanky. You get hit by this hammer a few times. We heal pure. All this is pure damage, by the way. So 
no matter what, how much armor you accumulate, it will not save you. I'm telling you, this Omni Offlane, damage-wise, is like, it, it's in levels of broken. I, I really okay. think it's like broken levels of damage. It's just getting there is the hard part. It's like kind of like you play with your friends and unranked and they like to meme around some real th clowny stuff, right? And normally they're pretty right about it, but like sometimes getting to like these really broken things in Dota is really hard to do. And I think that's Omni's one of them. Getting to that level where you can just be completely broken is not easy to do. But if you do get there, it is okay. sure broken. Sounds see another ghost of the boys on OG. Mirror, nicely done. I mean, recognizing, of course, that Sunstrike, he's going to be coming in pretty shortly, so... Except for the Tiny. What have you been going up against in regards to the early itemization, in, in particular in the lane for, for the Omni Knight? Is, like, Double Bracer and, and Phase Brute something that you've been versing often? Yeah. And then you just go for the... What's it? The Harpoon. You kind of just play it like a, an Abaddon, right? You just get on top of him. You get the Shard. Shard is very critical for this. So you get the shard and they just start popping off damage and you just start killing people. And after that, I don't know what the item build is after that, just whatever's good for the game, right? Something that keeps you survivable and continuing to fight. I think I've seen some Sange and Yasha's and stuff like that, BKB if necessary. They're just pretty much a carry at the end of the day. GPK is continuing to body this lane. They are going to need a, a lot more attempts on the side lane to, to help BZM get involved because he, he needs that code, he needs that experience, because currently 29 and 15 compared to the 16 and 3 from the Invoker. So like you said, GPK is very comfortable in this matchup. One Bracer and the Gloves of Haste as well. And I wonder how much of this matchup is swayed by Sunstrikes going off on other lanes and the Invoker not getting the kills. Or just, yeah, just not getting a kill, right? Because you're using a lot of resources to help your side lanes. And that's not a resource that you're using to help win your own lane. So if you don't get the kills, which he didn't get, right, for the first blood, and the second Sunstrike he used, he just didn't get any kills whatsoever. I think a lot of that could be hurting BCM's game in the mid lane. Six minute rune coming out here. See GPK? Is he actually going to be in some trouble here? The combination from OG bringing GPK down, but it's actually not enough in the end. And that boom with the double support, Toronto Tokyo sneaks that arrow by. Of course, save will still go down nonetheless. It's going to be a one for one. Uh, BZM, again, we're saying he's, he's going to need as many kills as he's going to be able to get. And he's able to pick that one up. Nope, definitely helps. The rune will go the way of GPK though, so. But he has to use it right away, so he won't be using that to punish the side lanes. Just. Get his farm back up and a bottle refill for his troubles too. Didn't miss any of the CS under the tower as well, so GPK continues to be on a tear here with this Void Spirit in the first seven minutes of this game. Very impressive. Top lane, is there going to be a Sunstrike to temp here? Let's see if they're going to have the damage though. Double Bracer again, like we said, very, very survival on Amira, so. He's out of resources completely. Only two stick charges. Save hasn't got anything as well to help out. Bottom though. They're not gonna have the sun strike for this attempt onto Nightfall. Nice spell casting though, nonetheless from OG. Well. It's almost enough. I can top, yeah, spell. tomato. Okay, tomato does still go down. So we almost see Nightfall die, but it's not gonna matter because Mira even with having minimal health, it, it didn't matter in the end. Well, Tiny came by and mangoed him, and then Tiny just stun tossed him and dropped a heal, and Tomato just died. So supports making the difference here. Because that's exactly what Tomato thought, right? And he's like, oh, he has no mana, it won't be a threat in mid lane. Sure. Saves combo to be able to set up for Toronto Tokyo. And we'll find a pretty big kill onto the Invoker as well. Who's going for a different item build this game as well? We've seen previously in a couple of games he's gone for that Midas into Orchid. This time it's the Treads into the Witchblade. But you get the kill and you get a haste rune now for GPK. And this is going to be huge. They're going to be able to continue to invade. It is under an Observer Ward. So OG will have plenty of time to respond to this. And in fact, Sebi is just going to TP to the opposite side of the map and potentially look for their own play. Yeah, I think the, the item build is just a result of the lane going so poorly. He's got one more leap. 
And he's up. Good read there. And Tomato just has to sit in the trees tall plane just... Because he knows GPK is missing. It's like, ah, uh, this is my life now, I guess. <laughs> not level 6, not farming. How long are you willing to sit here is the question. Yeah. And TP's on cooldown. Might have to walk back and just give up top and start hitting some neutrals. Doesn't feel good because you're not pressuring bottom. You're not really pressuring mid either. So it feels like you're kind of giving top up for pretty much nothing here. And Omni has had that good start. Here at the top of the net worth. Saber is being worked on. He's going to have it at a, at a pretty rapid rate as well. It's also a bit of a different game where we've seen at least... Wait, save? No, okay. <laughs> Not going to be able to get Tomato. But uh, yeah, it's a different game where we've actually seen Tiny get involved. And he's got an okay amount of net worth as well. So this could be a, a much early blink. And he, along with GPK, is going to be a lot of the initiation for Bet Boom. We're going for Nightfall here. But this is not an easy kill. As mentioned, Nog is always going to send illusions out. They just desperately, you can see they're all down here. They want to get this tower, but it's not particularly easy because Omni can TP in at any point. GPK is having one of those games where you feel like you don't want to run into them, right? So they're going to play this very cautiously and carefully, which is really going to be advantageous. That's a good deny on the Arcane Rune, making sure GPK doesn't get that for a future fight. It feels like you just can't make any big moves right now if you're OG. You have to sit back and farm. You still have this Invoker that is going the same build, right? Outside of the Midas. He's still going the Exhort. He still has Forge Spears. He still wants to farm. Feels like time is not your friend right now. And Tomato also being haltered quite a lot by GPK's rotation. And they're not going to stop now in Bedroom. They're going to walk in. Whoa, whoa. Oh, that's an aggressive jump in. They still want to try and take the fight. Whisper's going to come on over with the threat of the arena. It's a beautiful combination that nests them a kill onto GPK. And we're going to see OG really for them. It's the, the responsive game from them. You know, they're not really going to be proactive. We're going to see Bet Boom putting a lot more of the attention, you know, moving across the map, potentially trying to take these objectives. And, and that's where we can see, you know, the TPs coming through to help defend on OG. And that's exactly what we get out of Whisper there with that first arena. That was beautiful. And also Seb's positioning there really set up that arena just getting the hex getting the stun on top of the void spirit this is the one hero that they picked the void spirit into that is quite strong it's the line and said playing it perfectly just disabling the hero that he needs to disable this game i mean seb has a lot of impact potential in this game like clearing nog illusions and disabling gpk he pretty much counters both the mid and the carry this time, it's going to be much different with the Omni Knight being here. And especially without the Mars as well. So they'll TP Tomato. Concoction at the ready. Toronto, Tokyo doesn't have any more leap charges and should net them another kill. So even without the arena, they're able to at least keep the Invoker alive from the burst potential from GPK. And once again, Tau will be defended. Hmm. I was just thinking in my head playing with X Sword Invoker. You just have to settle the fact that you're never going to get a kill because invoker is always going to steal it with some strike <laughs> so it really does have to be a nice payoff because like tomato is making these moves right but he's not getting rewarded for them because the sunstrike is kind of nabbing all the kills you're a top lane highest net worth the boys onto bed boom and it's not going to be easy though okay never mind wow omni knight is a very tanky hero Important because it drags them away from mid, which we've seen prior. They've been able to defend with OG and do Whisper has no TP. It is coming out of the Corey along with yours. And that glyph should buy them enough time for OG to be able to respond and, and, and bring their forces back to set up a defense if it is required. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Much more even game though than what we saw last time. Really, the last game for OG was Whisper had a, a decent start, but again, really it was just BZM. And for the boys on Bet Boom, you had everyone that was having a, a lot of impact. Still, I, I'm trying to see. I was saying early, like Savers actually had a decent amount of net worth, but with all the fighting we, we've seen going on mid. 
he hasn't really had any alone time to work towards his blink dagger, so I guess it's okay because you do really have GPK that is still going to be able to initiate early long, but I do wonder how you're going to be able to get the farm for, for save. I wonder what's going on with Nightfall's net worth too. Like his net worth as a Naga, which I feel like is a lot lower than it should be considering his team has been fighting away from him. Very bizarre. But yeah, Nightfall's struggling a little bit in the net worth department here. Really quickly, nicely done from Toronto Tokyo as well with the Moonlight Shadow. Popped the smoke from OG and they were connecting from bot to mid. Very good. And Whisper, he went the Yule's build. Playing versus a Void Spirit. It is online, ready to go. And I think with the Witchblade being available and the Yules and of course just generally Arena being online, they can start moving around the map with each other. And I think this is something we didn't get to see Bezium do in the last game. Just walk around the map and just do things, right? It felt like he was just kind of farming and they're just sitting back passively. But they need him to play like a mid laner, right? Walk around, make some space on the map. That way Alchemist can play like a carry. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. Wouldn't be sad to see him walk off. bottom. He even said oh, it's daytime tough. and they are, they're getting surrounded. Toronto Tokyo from the south, even Nightfall's gonna look to get involved as well. They'll assassinate Seb. And they'll also be able to catch up the Mocha as well without any forces to act as a bodyguard. Now, GPK also took a lot of damage inside the arena. Whisper looking for the finishing blow, but he is not going to find it. And now, Tomato also shows up as well. Are they going to be able to avenge some of their deaths prior? It's a big jump in from Ari, but they're going to be cautious, man. I mean, this chemical rage, half duration left. What's the call from Bepum? You lose two supports and you're probably happy just to, to cut the losses there and, and look to get out. Yeah, they got the big kills though on Bedroom there. And didn't really cost much. Naga gets to go back and farm. I mean, they kind of just got outplayed a little bit there on OG at the beginning of that. They tried making two plays at once. They tried going on mid lane while still trying to hit bottom tower. I think I would have liked to see them just go bottom instead and go for that tower. But instead, they got caught with their pants down there. And then Volker goes down, Mars goes down. Those are some big net worth heroes that. You just traded for two supports, right? Not really the best trade in the world. Tomato. I run Ryan to save. Pops the chemical rage before the combination's gonna come through. Seb's in a pretty decent position as well to protect him. And the initiation, not enough to blow him up. They're now a little bit wary of the potential of extra heroes to come nearby. Oh, Beth Tomato. Sticks. Wow, all right. Uh -huh. Vero with the burst, couple of tips, well deserved. Tomato will give his own as well. I will connect on Ari. Has some of the shield rune, I believe, still to work with, but it's not that much extra health, and yeah, Vero's gonna find a double kill. Fun hasn't even begun yet, I'm telling you. Once he gets the shard, it gets really wild. I, I know people have been trying to cook with this hero for a little bit of time. I think even maybe not last Dream League, the one beforehand, that Talon at that stage were, were trying Savage, I think in one or two games, even tried to play an Omni Knight one. So yeah, people have seen the potential of this hero, but. Oh, shards uh, online. So I think it gets really fun when you finish the Harpoon because like you just can't run from him anymore. 50 base damage. <laughs> What is his talent? No yeah. one has a talent like this anymore. Like, what, why is he the only one? Did Shakers get removed? I know a Shaker had one. I, I believe it's not. Let me there. check it out. 30 base damage. So okay. Shaker has a 30 base damage at 10, and Omni has a 50. That's not fair. If it makes Omni, like, semi-viable, then I will take it. Until you see it too much. Yeah, man, yeah, well. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, this is not, not fun. <laughs> well, it looks like already OG Nun having too uh, fun of a time up against it. 6 0 1. It's going to add another kill to the tally as well. OG, they are starting to sweep across the mid. They've got this blink on Tomato. It's going to run straight to GPK first. I mean, it's a little bit messy though of, of an avenue, especially not with the concoction charge up long enough and the Omni Knight playing behind the Void Spirit. Tomato 
Still feeling like they can take the fight. Tornado, it's, it's messy again. It's going to disrupt some of the stun locks. Steps in a great position, however. Finds the damage. Nightfall a little bit too late with the song. Will help them nonetheless be able to TP out and get everyone else away. They tried there, but a little bit too much magical burst. Even if it wasn't a perfect symphony of skills there. And Seb, a little bit of trouble. But yeah, Omni has a built-in PKB too, by the way, pretty much with Repel. Just gone full circle back to the old, well, kind of the old Repel, I guess. Yeah. It's close enough. Close enough indeed. I mean, this one's dispellable, so it's the only difference. Radiance top tower is under attack. So when you play Resist Omni, you kind of do need to get a nullifier. Deal with the GA plus the Repel. Top lane, charging up the concoction again. GPK is going to be the target. They have so many stuns. <laughs> it's just so frustrating to play into as a spirit hero. Everyone this game has got stuns galore to be able to have some impact. That's a kill that goes into the tower. And, and GPK, three deaths, bottom net worth out of the cause as well. And, and I, Okay, obviously, it was the voice that was the issue. He wasn't able to communicate to the team that they were making a go on him. He got caught out without anyone nearby. Miero wasn't there. Uh, he bodied mid lane in regards to the CS and, and, and denies, but yeah, he's really struggling with these deaths. Yeah, that's why I thought they'd play a Tiny mid, because Tiny is much harder to kill in a game like this than a Void Spirit is. Lion is historically known for being really good versus pretty much all the Spirit heroes, right? And it's kind of showing, like he's getting chain stunned. And the shard's going to Whisper, of all heroes. Nice which, one. It's a good one. It's definitely one when you play for Snaga you want to have. And be judged fairly. Very nice one indeed. He even had the Ag Shard queued up himself. And wonder if he's actually... What the call is going to be if he does really want this Octarine this early on into the game. Shall see what the Mars God does himself. A smoke up from Bet Boom. They've been OG kind of making a lot of the plays ever so recently, but with wherever Miro is and save as well with the blink. Seb, not the most ideal target. I think Smoke Ducks have popped in a position where they got a glimpse of the Omni Knight, so Seb should be able to dance over to the right side, and he will not be caught. BZM got the other one, so some pretty decent A shards for, for the OG cause. Yeah, it's looking good. Still, this Omni is having an incredible game. There they go. Whisper? Nice jewels. Dodges the arrow. It ain't gonna matter in the end. There's your Omni. <laughs> What's your... <laughs> Look at the that, that was 2,000 damage, by the way. Ah, yeah. Continuing to go there. They've got a pretty nice observer around the remnants of this T1 tower. You have to be cautious running to a choke point. A again, with all these AoE stuns and especially the spells from BZM, it could be devastating for Bepum. And it looks like they're well aware of this as well. They are not going to run to where OG are currently set up. Be commander though. Is this bait? What is it? He's got Chemical Rage at the ready, but that toss back into the burst from Miero might catch him off guard. I'm not going to try and give them that opportunity, though. How do you itemize into the Omni? I, I know you brought up the the Nullify, like any any purges. Is there anything else you can even kind of itemize to, to deal with this hero? Is it, is it more just like play style and, and shutting him down in the lane? I mean, I'm not sure what item deals with pure damage. Like, Blade Null shouldn't even work either because he can repel himself. I mean, yeah, you just have to keep your distance from him. Like, stun him, pretty much. And Nullifier. Oh, save. Stuns with Nullifier. All right. Speaking of stuns, that's a good way to start. On to two, they'll get an easy kill onto Whisper. And now you've got Nightfall as well. He's in a great position to be able to follow up and also try and target down Tomato. Chemical Rage is about to expire and they're going to be able to get the kill through the HP region. Now the song as well. I mean, they're going to catch the, the TP in from BZM. The arrow will fly on past, but it does not matter at all. BZM will still go down. It gets a call. 
combo off on his dying breath. So you will get a return kill on to Nightfall, but Bedroom have nothing to fear now. A charge up to the high ground. This beyond god like this Omni Knight fear <laughs> that you were mentioning as soon as it was picked up. You said if it got to the stage, it looks pretty broken at that end. I mean, we're seeing that 10, 0, and 2 is Miera on the Omni Knight. Yeah, the, the damage output this hero does is absolutely absurd. You have to be able to stun him. I think the game plan changes from the Lion. You have to use all your stunts on Omni. Like, who cares about the Void Spirit at this point? I mean, they did manage to kill Nightfall, which is good. But Nightfall is like the, the second carry of this game. Uh, Miro's the true carry of this game here, and GPK is the offlaner. <laughs> I think that's how like this game is accurately represented in one to five positions. Okay. <laughs> Alright, Miro the carry, let's see what you got in store for us. 20 talents can yeah, look pretty nice. Yeah. What's this 20 talent? Six second hammer purity cooldown reduction or two second repel. I, you definitely go for the hammer, right? That definitely makes a lot of sense. Because minus six seconds, so it's only a lot. Wow. It's a lot. On a ten second cooldown spell, are you kidding me? It's a hell of a talent. 25 wouldn't be too bad as well with the percent damage. If that is what you go down. Imagine it would be with the right click. Bet boom. Smoking OG, they are very disconnected. You got one hero down bottom. In fact, two heroes up top now with the portal. They I'm gonna try and smoke and go through, but uh, Pet Boom, they're ready. They're, they're antsy for a fight. BZM is gonna be able yeah, to stand his ground, turn with the BKP, the Omni Knight falling low. Miro tries to play around with the Guardian Angel, but it is not gonna be enough. OG, they get a massive streak. Can they get more out of this though? Looks like save in a compromised position. Whisper's gonna be able to find the speed back onto the wall, but the rest of Bet Boom, they're still ready to go. They'll get the Yules to be able to set up for the eighth of Remnant. Whisper's taking up a lot of the spells. He's not dead just yet. Oh, it just showcases how much damage this Omni Knight really pumps out for Bet Boom. And they couldn't even get the kill. Somehow Sen, I don't know how we got in range for the Earth Spike to catch out Toronto Tokyo's TP up. But nonetheless, OG, I mean, there was three heroes there to start the fight. And they actually come out on top. What happens when you kill the carry of first? You know, Miro, he goes down, gets caught by that arena, doesn't repel himself, and just ends up going down. So that's what they need to do, and Miro's kind of realizing that he needs a BKB now. As Nightfall, it's not an easy Naga game. They early pick the Naga, you're playing versus the Radiance, they're playing versus Seb with a shard, right? So your illusions are dying in these fights. They need the Omni to stay alive. That's for sure here. That's also the other downside of this Omni here. I feel like once you die once, you kind of feel like you lost. <laughs> okay. Well, I feel like it's a little concerning for heroes in that position where you have, like, I know some people have mentioned, like, uh, Queen of Pain, for example, has got, like, a four kill, like, death quote off. You die, like, more than that, maybe even three times. It's like, all right, it's like, GG, my, my hero does nothing now. If you got, if you only have one death you can give up uh, on a hero, I don't know. I, I don't like that margin of error. Okay, it might be higher than one, but it's definitely one of those heroes that can't die, for sure. Okay. This Roche is not going to go down fast enough. Can they get set up on OG? What's the call? Do you want to continue, Miero? Jumping on the line. They're going to try and deal with a lot of the control out of Seb. A defensive arena, but it catches no one. And now what is the call? Do you want to buy back on Seb to take the team fight? Concoction doesn't even get chucked out as well. Tomato stuns himself. It's the buyback though from Lion. We're looking to reset. Spear's going to connect. Do they want to jump in? Ari sees an opportunity with a burst potential. It's there. OG. They'll blow up GPK. Tomato's ready to go as well. It's only onto an illusion. It's like they're still going to be having second thoughts, OG. Do you go back for the pit instead? a very slow fight. Seb surviving for that long is really critical. And of course, he did go down at the end, but he had buyback available, which was also critical. So all those things considered, he had fast reactions. He got his Ghost Scepter off before he got hit by the Omni. So didn't get instantly deleted because if he would have got hit by Omni two times, he would have for sure been dead there. Oh, but he is with no buyback now, but that may have just secured him Roshan, which it did. So well worth it. 
Man, OG. Two fights now. I win probability is bugged. It says OG 100%. Uh, nonetheless, because Omni died once, that's why. Oh, you were right. <laughs> oh, you're right. I mean, you, you said you know, this Omni night, you, you get to that stage, yeah. this hero looks pretty goddamn good. He's been looking good so far, but one death all of a sudden. That he gave him says it's, <laughs> it's GG and. It's over. <laughs> I don't know. This is 3,000 net worth lead, two fights, all they needed from OG. And Bepum is still posturing very aggressively, though. And, and Whisper. With that shield rune, is actually still going to be able to get the blink after the avalanche. And, and now save. You're trying to TPR. They got some stuns. Ar what? Like, oh, repel. Okay. Yeah, he was. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, he makes it out. You know, they are still chasing. Arena's there. Nightfall is going to be nearby, so at least he can play around with the song. Is he going to get hit by the concoction? Okay. Oh. Far out. I. Does he have the talent? He does it. It was really close, though. I mean, Nightfall was just like peace and TP'd immediately, and Miro almost got stunned after that just because he wasn't under protection of the song. But I think they're just waiting for Omni's BKB. I guess one counter to Omni, if you think about it, is probably going to be a BKB. So more BKBs, the better. Which they have only one on OG, as Alchemist opted for... I, they, instead of buying BKBs this game, OG bought Octarine cores on Alchemist and on Mars. Yeah, I know. More spells. Can't, can't go wrong with that, right? Of course not. Octarine core is a fun item. Help out with the stats. Get some cooldown reduction. Continue to play on the map. See how they can use it, though. So far, spell casting has been pretty on point for OG. But not out of it just yet. I will say, really, I, I think you, I mean, mentioned it perfectly with the uh, with the with the Omni Knight being the carry and the Nightfall kind of being the position too. We really have not felt the impact so far of the Naga, and maybe that's going to change shortly with this Bloodthorn soon to be completed, and even 500 gold just for the last component in the Hyperstone. I just feel like Nightfall's positioning in this game has been a little less than desirable. He hasn't been able to find the angles to really sneak in and assassinate some of the key heroes in this game. But Is maybe that... with the Ghost Scepter, it's hard because he's playing versus a line with a Ghost Scepter, right? So normally you'd want to get back there, you kill a support, but if you don't kill the line, he just kills your illusions right away. And I think that's why we generally don't like seeing people play Naga into Lion for that exact reason. It can make playing team fights very difficult. So what do you feel like is the call then? Is Does he need to itemize to deal with this Ghost Scepter or is it on the rest of Bepum to, to get the Lion first? It's definitely up to GPK's Void Spirit to just assassinate this Lion in the okay. fight. So that way the Naga can get in there. I think see that's, if that's what the they should do. See if they can do that this fight. Whisper is going to charge up the higher ground and Bepum, they are ready. A quick and easy kill into the Mars and they already want to transition for a plus one and they'll find that GPK gets the connection onto Ari on the retreat and I think they spied out BZM they're pinging the area we're gonna see the courier as well let's see if Toronto Tokyo continues to stalk but no, they're gonna be happy with that now Tomato mid lane so looking for him so this Omni Knight burst is quite literally I think if he gets all his attacks off and both his spells it's 2000 pure damage which he Mars Very has 2.8 cool. k HP. Both supports Dyer's instantly die. Even the Alchemist only has 2.5 k HP, and same with Invoke at 2.5. So he he's like Tomato. pretty much just like he just melts everyone. Uh, are they gonna be able to blow him up before the respawns and TP's in with Miro here? It's all the damage they need. Tomato's able to slip out of the right hand side. They will deal with Seb. I mean that's heavily going to enable Nightfall inside the team fights, but the song they want to get out. Pep Boom, they want nothing to do with this team fight, or they just reevaluate how do they can take the angle. BZM flying to jump in with the spear, connecting onto two of the invokers, having a free fight, starting to get all the right click damage out they would need, but it's just not enough. The damage isn't there at the moment. OG, they lose three, they're gonna lose more as well. BZM leaps down to the low ground. Tomato, though, they're still gonna be able to catch up to the Alchemist as Pep Boom. I mean, what a team fight. <laughs> BZM reveals himself. He's got a hurricane. Got a harpoon. Boom, BZM popped out. Is it going to matter? 
Nine Four is trying to swing all the way around over the ice wall. I mean, Miro might go down, but it seems like it's a worthwhile sacrifice. As, I mean, OG being able to build up so much momentum, back to back fights they've been winning, but Bet Boom out of nowhere find a five man wipe, and now all of a sudden, the high ground is in shambles. Yeah, I mean, he died there just so that the Invoker can't defend the base. I mean, he can buy back if he wants to, but that's something he probably does not want to do. But do you get this barracks is the question. I'm not so sure you can, even so. Because, yeah, you are respawning on Whisper. Lion's also alive. They're going to do some damage. Probably in hindsight, they should have taken the ranged racks, not knowing they had enough time, but... Sometimes you just don't see these things in the moment. I see we'll now chip away at it with delusions. Oh, interesting. Water is going to go shavers, so a little bit more of a not your stock standard position one elk. I know, of course, when we were seeing 33 play the, the alchemist. Um, I mean, again, that's an offline alchemist, and, and he definitely was going for pretty much the exact item build that Tomato has in this game. But it will put you in a situation where your physical damage is going to be lacking a little bit. I think the reason why he's doing that is he thinks BCM will be that right-click threat. And he might be right about it too, but this oh, is very spot? similar. Okay. Uh, that's a quick and easy kill. I mean, you, again, Knifeful here with Bloodborne now. A butterfly all of a sudden completed and they're already ready to go. I, I do believe that was underneath the cliff ward, so we already see OG starting to react. Oh, that's nasty, actually. I didn't know this is an item Omni spot, but it makes sense. He's going for Conda. Even more of that magical burst damage on... That's... that's dirty. I can't wait till he's level 20. <laughs> It'll be fun. Oh! I mean, that's a huge target! Already uses the Harpoon, so BZM is gonna be fine. They'd love to be able to force the buyback out of the Mars, but with that initiation not going the way they would hope, this was going to be able to hold his buyback. Yeah, it's hard to go on BZM. Like, that's the one thing with the Omni Knight that he doesn't do. He doesn't have a stun, right? So you can always just Hurricane Pike away or use whatever spells you need to to disengage. Can they get an eye for? Hang on, this Cliff Ward. And they need to be perfect, though. 2900 health they have to go through to prevent the song. And with all the stuns, they should be able to do it along with the Evoker's damage. They dump everything for the night feel cool and they will be rewarded very very good kill i mean their lanes are really garbage still but they actually no okay they will save the mid barracks i just getting quite low there was a catapult wave there but it will be saved for now uh but the question is what can you do after that kill and then the answer is probably going to be not much maybe get another kill could be good but tomato how do they know oh, oh wow great reaction and OG coming instantly, I mean, it's still 40 seconds of 4v5. This is that window that OG need to, to get themselves back into the game, but pretty solid retreat. Whispers ready though with the arena, Eclipse up to two. Both supports under the T2 tower, but where is BZM? They need the Invoker's damage output. He's gonna come in towards the tail end of the team fight. An aggressive jump into the middle with a combination laid onto the deck. They're gonna be rewarded now, Miero. He's in trouble as well with the BKB soon to expire. There's the spear from Whisper. And all they needed was one death on the Naga, and they could catapult that into multiple extra kills. I mean, Nightfall, this must feel so bad about his death now. His death snowballed into his entire team dying, and now his barracks dying. Like, all they had to do is just wait. For Naga to respawn, and it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But now it's an absolute disaster. This might be potentially two sets of barracks. Not nah, there's too many tier twos up, but they're definitely gonna mop up that tier two, and they're gonna keep hitting top lane until this Omni Knight is closer to respawn for sure. Top tower has Hex just getting delivered for BZM as well. You see what the Lion's been able to do for the Void Spirit. Now you have the Hex in the hands of the Invoker as well. Just um, so much. Well, now you're five k ahead is OG. You got a mid barracks, so it helps with creep equilibrium. Hex is online, as you mentioned. Alchemist, 
I mean, I guess he had the Shivas, he just got another couple thousand gold on top of it. A lot of cool items to play with here, and Refresher, I think, is going to be the big one for the Mars when that one comes online. Having two arenas, two BKBs, is going to be absolutely huge. And the next no. fight is going to be Roshan. This one could determine the game. A Whisper needs to go huge. See what he's going to be able to do with the arena here. Some mines nearby to be uh, potentially scout out. So onto Tokyo is going to lead the charge first. Whisper on an aggressive jump in. Look at the wraparound over the right side. They're onto the invoker. BZM tries to get the PKP, but it's not enough. And he doesn't have a buyback without their main damage source. What can they do on OG? They'll be able to respond with a kill on to save his Nightfall once again, using the song to look to reset the fight. Can they still end up turning this around? Tomato looking to try and target down with the Omni Knight as he got the damage bike himself though. The stun control. They get me error and Nightfall was unable to enter. So in the end, even with the Invoker dying first, OG will, will make it somewhat of a decent trade. Yeah, that's pretty good, but you're starting to see like these fights, the longer they are, the better they are for the Alchemist. He's actually getting lots of stacks of the like, corrosive weaponry on him, making the stun duration, like removing status resistance, right? And you have a line, a techies, and of course a Mars on your team. That Omni was just stunned for like 10 seconds by one concoction, just because he was able to hit him for a long duration of time off of a line stun. And Miro, without a BKB, I've been watching him very closely in these team fights and what he could do. And when his BKB is on cooldown, he's very scared because he's playing against a lot of stuns here. And Repel, it does have a long cooldown, so you can't just like throw it out there and have multiple uses of it in team fights. The team fights aren't long enough to have multiple repels here. But Roshan is instant. up now. Everyone goes down to bottom to try and get themselves set up. We're gonna have a 5v5 once again for this Rosh. Will it be fast enough though without the Omni Knight here? OG. No, they're not going to get there in time. Bad. Nightfall rips it apart. Jesus. All right. That's Bloodthorn for you. Yeah, they still want to fight. Tomato. Can he find the angle though with the aggressive jump on the high camp? But GPK, he's the one with the ages. So you're trying to target him with the Void Spirit, but he's got the second life inside the team fight. As now it's looking messy for OG. Tomato gets blown up. How can they respond? Again, it's all on to the Invoker, but Whisper... He'll drag them over to the left side. It's a great tornado. BZM continuing to provide the chaos. The EMP is devastating. But Nightfall with the song resets and they can look to go back in afterwards with the arrow connecting. Now they'll turn to Seb and it looks like OG. I mean, you just have to hope that BZM somehow is able to escape as well. BKB, he will not be able to TP though. Blink is there, getting some separation to the north. GPK has no more ults save Maybe you're blinking to the yours if you can catch up. Nonetheless, though, OG, they've got no buybacks. The lanes are in an okay position. They do have Glyph at least. But they weren't even able to get the Aegis there. And the amount of damage that was coming out. I mean, yet again in the team fights, it's the Omni. He's still, if he's able to hit heroes, doing the most damage in every single fight. And this Parasma, now finished for the Void Spirit, also makes him a big threat. Shenanigans can BZM go up too. I was wondering if he was going to look to cut bottom, but maybe instead he's just going to go for his own trade. And he does do a lot of damage with this build. It's something. Yeah, I think this is the most impact he can potentially have. He's not defending. I'm surprised that no one's going back for this, but I guess they're just going to let him have that side. One's and going now. for the rest of the base. Oh. We'll see if he got the blink. Is BKB up? Still on cooldown. And they've got the gem as well. I mean, this is going to be a dead invoker. He doesn't have gold for buyback fear. I mean, BZM going for the Hell Mary play and they, they without a dash should be able to secure the kill. Okay. Are they? No Are way. They? Wow. Omni's dead? <laughs> wow, BZM. They only lose a full set of barracks bottom. I, I guess they did get the melee barracks, but like you said, Omni's dead and they are hunting. Now, they're going to be cautious though because Bedroom have regrouped and get Seb just it runs straight to his death. And, and BZM, he's not with the team currently. It's really going to be up to Tomato for the damage output. 
They're still gonna try and make the attempt, but this is an Aegis Void Spirit. You are bumping your head again. GPK will shrug off the initiation. It has given enough time though for BZM to be able to reconnect with the team. They want to deal with the support. Toronto, Tokyo. Aeont is going to be able to protect him. Finally, they'll deal with the first life out of the Void Spirit. How can they get set up for the second? Arena still on cooldown for Whisper. And importantly, the Chemical Rage has only got a quarter duration left as the Arrow will connect from downtown. And they should be able they to get the kill onto Tomato. No buyback. And again, OG need to get out. Yeah, no money for the buyback here. That's going to be big. I mean, they're trying to make plays happen on the map. They got the Omni buyback out of this, but unfortunately, Tomato just doesn't have the money to be able to buy back here. It's costing a bit too much at this stage of the game. How do you this fight without Tomato, though? Do we have Refresher this, online? Not yet. This is an ultimate test of BZM's Invoker. <laughs> and I've been working on... Oh, Mission I Impossible. <laughs> Can they have the perfect chain control? Where's Seb? Jump in for the song. Oh, Nightfall. And now this could be devastating for OG. They are all clumped up. Importantly, BZM doesn't get caught, but it's not going to matter. These supports, they are lacking buybacks. Yeah, I mean, the only two heroes of buyback are alive right now on the side of OG. And all they can do for now is just kind of watch here as their base is just going to crumble down. Not much you can do in this situation as the Marv or as the Invoker. None of your spells are available. I think Whisper's wishing that he had his nice Refresher job. Orb right about now, but unfortunately not close enough as he will go down here. Let's have a buyback at least. Yeah, they both Wait, have buybacks. They just need to seconds. buy time. And they're doing that. They might be able to get the kill into the Tiny as well. Mio. What? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> Where'd he go? What? He's got what is the Omni damage? And how the jump whisper though, again, I mean, he just bought back. How much space they can they provide? BZM, he's gonna be free inside this fight now to the north, being able to spell cast. But you continue to make space here for the support to be back up, surely. It might be too little too late though. You've lost the Mars. Tomato's in some danger as well. Miro gets on top of the Alchemist. Chemical Rage is out. And soon his health pool soon to follow as well. And now GPK has also been able to get on top of the Invoker. Bad boom. It was looking shaky for multiple portions of this game. But it looks like in the end, this team is going to continue with their very dominant run so far in Dream League Season 22. Yeah, they're looking quite good in all the games so far. Yeah, it got a little bit shaky. GPK died quite a few times on the foil. Spirit got caught out by Seb's Lion, but at the end of the day, the offlane Omni Knight, it really worked out when it needed to. Like, there's phases where you're just like, okay, he died, uh, a couple of the other heroes died, Nightfall died, his team died, and then...